Hey everyone, just to let you know that this video is sponsored by Ant Keeping Depot. In today's video I'm unboxing some ants I'm really excited about from Ants Davy. A little while ago he reached out and asked me would I ever be interested in a leaf cutter colony. This would have been no if it hadn't have been for some circumstances lining up at the right time. One. He was offering these free of charge, which is obviously very nice of him, with only condition was to make a video, which is I was going to do anyway. So to me, not really any conditions. But the other reason I wouldn't have got them is housing. I just really didn't want to be mithered with the housing of it all. But... Wakushi has been working on a foundation chamber and other pods further down the line that will actually make the whole keeping process much much easier. So I bought into the testing. I also picked number of people's brains extensively because I will openly say I didn't know anything heading into leaf cutters than general knowledge. So, after talking to Wakushi and Antics and extensively and Davies, I went over everything that I would be worried about. My biggest thing was the housing, so I got that well in advance way before. And this is Wakushi's beta testing pod. There are some refinements for when it launches, which shouldn't be too far away, but it has a number of features to make life easier. It has this entire base of like gypsum and you can fill it from the outside and it will take over a week's worth of water to keep the humidity at 99% constantly. It has a number of other features as you can see here as a leaf holder, it has a raised mesh bed to stop direct contact with moisture for the nest and it also has a slanted lid to stop any droplets that form from the humidity levels and the outer temperatures and the inner temperatures. It's slanted so if droplets do form they don't drop directly down, what they do is they run down to the front and drop off where the nest isn't. So, with all that in mind, and this little foundation pod includes a thermostat and hygrometer, I thought, okay, this is pretty good timing. Ants Davies has got the ants, he's raised them up into a little golf ball, and Wakushi has something for me to put them in. So, I must have changed my mind about six or seven times, even to the point of nearly cancelling the whole idea. But then I didn't. I went through with it, I thought, you know, if I don't like it afterwards, I'm sure somebody will be able to take them off my hands. But, I received them, and I haven't looked back, not once. They're an absolute doddle. That will obviously be due to their size at the moment, I'm not dealing with millions, but I will have to in the future, which is why when Ants Davies offered me the Acromyrmix leafcutter ants, these are more sensible for keeping in captivity if you've not got a ton of room. Now we all know there's a lot of species of leafcutters out there, there is a lot. But the two main kept ones are the Atters and the Acromyrmics. So out of the two, one of them grows into millions and millions, where this one only grows into a few million. And therefore, out of the two, for me personally, this was the best species I could opt for. On a side note, this part of the video that you're seeing it was shot, shot on a really quickly unscheduled thing where the queen actually curled up, went all stiff and then was carried by a worker 
like a suitcase to her new location. So in the video here now, I'm actually getting ready to tip out the fungus mixed with some cocoa fibers and dead fungus. So what I've done is I've like sort of rolled a leaf until it has no um, curves on it anymore. So it's like a flat surface and I did that for multiple leaves and I put them along the bottom so I could tip the damaged from the postman all my fungus has actually become very gravelly and um, what they'll need is time to sort out the cocoa fibre, the dead fungus and the good fungus and obviously the uh, young on the eggs they'll need time to sort that out so to stop it falling through my raised grill I laid a bed of leaves and tipped them on top of it and this actually worked out quite well for me I think I was contacting Wakushi and Ants Davies on a daily basis at this point just really for comparing notes essentially both of them have had leaf cutters a lot longer than myself and I was also invited into a WhatsApp group where I was able to see some other people's beginnings as well. This very much calmed my nerves and everything was going pretty fine from what I could see and so I stopped asking questions and I just got on with it. So here I wanted to stop them moving the fungus from the center so I give them a little enclosed capsule where they would feel a bit more secure until they pieced it together which on this day, uh, this video you're watching now was the time I felt that they had sorted it out what actually happened was they spent multiple days picking out the fungus that was good from the dead fungus and the cocoa fiber then they made a big massive um, pile of rubbish and then I had this tiny little bit of good fungus left so what I did with, with a very small spoon is I worked at it for a few hours actually, getting it out a little bit by lit. You see there's a little bit left in the corner there of the rubbish pile, but I left that there so they can add to it, not re-establish somewhere else. Once all that rubbish was out of the way, I thought, right, okay, let's remove the pod. Because now they've built it into a single piece, they're not going to be picking it up. So, this is what I was left with. So. I wanted to build them up. There was far less fungus than I realised. When we say golf ball size, you know, I was literally expecting a golf ball. We're talking more like a large marble in a marble set. So I was naturally wanted them to get cutting quite quickly. But that isn't what happens. After you after this sort of service in the post as well as all this new surroundings and that, they're not very quick to get cutting. But, after trying multiple leaves, all recommended to me, they would only eat the included dried rose petals, which is fine as a stopgap, but I really needed to get them onto fresh, hydrated leaves. They not only get their sugars from the leaves themselves but also the moisture so I really needed to get them going after a trip to a organic garden center which was I had to pass six garden centers to get to the seventh one that had some elderberry in stock that wasn't treated in any way but it didn't have the normal type that I was expecting the ones from the pictures they actually had black beauty so I bought two of these come home and I put one leaf in and they immediately took it now I've been trying bramble and raspberry I've been trying other honeysuckle plants I tried privet I've been through quite a few to be honest I can't actually remember all of them off the top of my head but I'd been through a few, and I'd been out with my camera and my app that was recommended to me, identifying plants as I walked. I live near a forest, so it wasn't really too hard to find everything I needed. But 
nothing I collected from the outside they would have. They've only ever eaten garden centre plants so far. They've been offered others and they've just not took it. So right now I have two plants that they will take. So that's what I've been keeping them on. Um, because they like Black Beauty so much from the Elderberry family, I thought I'd get them some others. So I got them uh, Black Lace and what you would recognise as a standard Elderberry and um, making cuttings off them for propagation and keeping everything going. This shot here is actually from above, through the thing, and we're not having to go through the curved acrylic outside, which causes distortion on cameras. We've got no lid on, and as you can see, I've not really disturbed them. It can be very calm, as long as you don't go in messing with them. I've not had anything happen to me yet. Everything's been good, but a few pinches. But if anything, um, I've had more ants on me do nothing to me than bit me. Just slow, smooth, non-jarring movements, and I find it's good. I'll be bringing you a second part to this video, because it's just too much to cram into a single video, especially with everything that's happened along the way. I've had these ants over a month now, and I wanted to make sure that everything was going well before I brought you into the loop with them on the channel. With that said, I don't think I'm going to be doing a guide because I don't think somebody that's just got them, that hasn't had them for years, should make a guide. So I can only tell you what I've done. This is by no means a guide to follow, but you can if you like. Thanks a lot guys and I'll see you in part two.